Hey, hey, everybody. Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. <laughs> we got a great show tonight. Our guest is Matt Colrick. Hey, Matt, say hi. Hey, hello. Hi, How everyone. you doing? We got lots of great stuff to talk to him about. Plus, we have a cautionary tale from Mrs. Leonard, who will be in here in just a minute. And if you've got a question for Matt or for George and I, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman, I know, is in there taking down every last word we say. He's, He's not, really good at that. Yeah, it's got to write really fast. Anyway, nice. your questions, we want them. Matt Colrick with us tonight. You ready, George? Let's do it. All right. Voice over body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BBS. All right. Yeah, the beard does make me look older. But what are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> Keep growing it. I want to see the Colonel Sanders thing. Oh, oh, yeah. But then I have to have curly white hair, and that'll be <laughs> totally, totally weird. Anyway, we got Mal Calric coming up in just a couple of minutes, but my wife has arrived back from Italy with a cautionary tale, so we're going to invite her in, and she's going to tell us about her adventure. So lean right in there. Huh? There you go. All right. Hello. <laughs> hey, Marcy. My wife, Marcy. I'm <laughs> Marcy, and Dan and I had this wonderful vacation planned, and because we had had four vaccinations and we were so excited to get to travel... We went on a Viking river cruise, and then we went to Paris for a few days, and then Dan took his COVID test on Friday. It was negative. He flew home, and I flew to Florence. And um, this represents the first part of the trip, the lovely <laughs> poppy dress. Sunshine, which, poppies. Which you bought in Avignon, is Poppy, yeah. poppies. This is not the second part of the trip. So <laughs> so I started to get what I assumed was allergies on Monday. And I was so tired that I could have laid down in the middle of the street and just stopped. And so I'm sneezing and I'm coughing and I'm buying more allergy medication. And one of my friends, my close friends from Buffalo, met me in Italy we were staying in Florence in this beautiful condo with four bedrooms, and it overlooked the Arno, and it was in the perfect location, except on Tuesday I tested positive for COVID. And so I was feeling pretty sick, and I was in a foreign country, and although I did go abroad to Italy in 1980 to study Italian, I am good enough to order dinner and find the bathroom. Yeah, I am not <laughs> competent to negotiate healthcare in another country. Fortunately, I found a virtual doctor who spoke English and she told me I had to go to the emergency room 
and that she wrote me a letter in Italian because thank God nobody spoke English. In Italy, the cab drivers speak English, the waiters speak English, the people trying to sell you dresses and shoes speak English. But not the doctors. The doctors, no. no. And I got shipped to a COVID hotel. And you think, oh, it's a COVID hotel in Italy. It'll be nice. The food will be good. Uh, No. (laughs) We got microwaved hospital meals. And... I'm gluten-free, and I got the same yellow soup like four times. I, it, it, you, it, <laughs> did, it was like, and then, and then overcooked spinach or something that just stank. The food was not very good. It was really not very I good. Really and one day for a lunch, nice <laughs> because I'm gluten-free, they don't always get a gluten-free step. I literally got a stack of cheese, like four packages of cheese. That was my lunch. And I'm not allowed to leave. I've got nine. I ended up nine days in the COVID hotel. In so, one room. In one room, right. In one room. It was kind of like a youth hostel, cement walls. I had a little desk. I did take an online watercolor class, so my watercolor skills have improved. I kept myself busy. Every time I opened my window, I I was bitten up. I had so many mosquito bites, but I had to be able to open the window. So I would open the window and I would wait until I saw a red car. And when I saw a red car, I closed the window. You know, <laughs> you got to do it. <laughs> Ferraris and Fiat. There had to be a red one in there somewhere. It takes a long time in Italy to find a red car. I got to tell you, they're they're mostly white and gray and silver. Anyway, um, I had to wait till I test it negative. And there was an entire hotel full of people. And once I finally posted it, everybody's telling me, oh, yeah, so-and-so stuck. So-and-so stuck. We have a friend stuck in in uh, Spain, Spain right yeah. now. And I am never traveling out of this country again as long as I live. I say that right now. But if you're planning on going abroad and they're not wearing masks in those countries, I was watching yesterday the Queen's Jubilee Oh, my God, stay away from England. You'll get sick. Um, You know, and and I'll just say one more thing. So I had to stay in the COVID hotel. COVID hotel is not a nice place to stay. It's like a Motel 6. (laughs) No, Motel 6 would at least be friendly. I mean, nobody spoke (laughs) English. It was really not very comfortable. And the people who cleaned our rooms and the doctors that came in were wearing hazmat suits. But the people that worked in the hotel weren't even wearing masks. And so they would be on our floors. We all have COVID. And I said to one of the guys in my broken Italian, why aren't you wearing a mask? And he says, I've been vaccinated. Every friggin' person in that hotel was vaccinated. And so many people on cruise ships are getting booted off. And if you're on a cruise ship in Italy or England, you're going to get dumped in a COVID hotel, stay home, order good food out, rent some good travel movies, and like explore California. So that is my cautionary tale. From someone who was looking so forward to seeing the world, I am not going anywhere ever again. (laughs) And and she asked, well, I'm not going to be able to do any shopping in Italy. And I'm like, that's okay. I only want one thing back from Italy. <laughs> I, I didn't get, get to good. buy anything. No shoes, Aww. no dresses, no purses, no nothing. <laughs> we can order that stuff online. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Darn. Thank well, you, dear. Thank you. thank you for letting me tell my tale. I'll go now. <laughs> take my whining dog with and, you. And take the dog, yep. <laughs> oh, I feel, gosh, I feel terrible. I mean... You feel like you're doing the right thing. You waited till the pandemic mostly was, you know, calmed down. Yeah. And and you're all vaxxed and the whole nine. And then that It didn't happens. matter. It didn't matter. You're going to get this stuff no matter what. Anyway, let's move on to our special guest tonight, although it was wonderful having Marcy on for once. Mm-hmm. Uh, joining us uh, from British Columbia, Matt Kalrick's voiceover career spans over 20 countries, utilizing multiple accents in a variety of voice types and age ranges. That'll be interesting. His clients include an impressive collection of the world's top brands and multinational companies, 
Matt records for commercials, animation, corporate and industrial narrations, promos, and many other mediums. And he, all, and he does it all from the wilds of British Columbia. Let's welcome Matt Calrick back to the show. Hey, Matt. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello, everyone. Hey, buddy. Great to see you again. How you doing? Great to be back. Yeah. Yeah, doing well. Thanks. That's that's great. And staying uh, in his booth. Yes. Yeah, mm. Don't leave. Yeah. Don't leave the booth. <laughs> Especially if only now. we could take our booths with us on international travel. Yeah, really. I used Hermetically to, I used, sealed. Yeah. I used yeah. to say when, when this pandemic started, you know, you know, if, if it wipes out mankind, all the voice actors are going to be hiding in their booths and we will rule the world. So, yeah. wow, that was a really long e learning narration. Where, where did everyone go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Audiobooks will save us all. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it, saved, it saved my wife. That's for darn sure. She listened to about <laughs> 10 books while she was in there. <laughs> so, you do a lot of stuff. Uh, all over the place. But first, tell, tell us a little bit about your background, because you're not from British Columbia. You're from, you're from Oz. No, no, yeah. I uh, <laughs> started in, yeah, the uh, beginnings were in Queensland, in Australia, and uh, I grew up there and did some travel overseas, spent lots of time in, in Europe uh, before COVID was a thing. And I lived in London for a while, and then headed back to Australia and just randomly ended up on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And the plan was just to stay here for, for a little while, but um, it's now going well over a, a 10 years that I've been here. Well, 2011, so yeah, a decade and change. Um, and uh, never, never managed to leave and I'm pretty permanent now. Yeah. So, so what brought you to British Columbia? Oh, it was that old story, Dan, a Canadian girl. Uh, and, oh, yes. Uh, yeah. I uh, was just ready for the next travel adventure as well and uh, kind of had itchy feet after doing all that, that travel in, in Europe. And uh, I just said, yeah, what the hell, and packed up and moved over here. And the plan was to sort of stay for a, for a little while. And um, then the relationship ended and I stayed uh, just because <laughs> I – love the way of life over here and um at that point you know i was uh doing more and more voiceover work and it was really useful being in the pacific time zone and so close to eastern whereas in australia uh it's it's bedtime when everyone's doing business uh so that was a you know definitely a, a bonus point for me there um and then yeah just really became uh a permanent resident and uh, uh, theoretically and, and literally. And uh, yeah, then I met my wife and we've got a, a four-year-old daughter. And, wow, uh, fabulous. So yeah, definitely settled. That's great. Uh, once again, our guest is Matt Kalrick. And uh, if you've got a question for Matt, as we discuss stuff, uh, throw it in the chat room. Jeff Holman is in there and he will get those questions to us. Um uh, so, I mean, tell us a little bit more about this rural location that you're in. Now, first off, Victoria Island is an yeah. island. It's not part of the mainland of British Columbia. The only way to get yeah. there is by ferry. Yeah, ferry or, or light plane. Um, they, they do have a, an international airport in Victoria. And Vancouver Island itself is a, is a huge island. Um, I think it's like as, nearly as big as the UK. A lot of it is... Um, Mountains, and, you know, fjords and mountains and forest, yeah. which is which is wonderful. Um, but the population of the actual island is only around uh, a million, I think. Uh, and so Victoria is is a reasonably sized city, uh, just under four thousand four hundred thousand people. Um, but there is really no um, large media entertainment industry here to speak of. That's a lot. Of, there's a lot of location shooting for films, but. Uh, you know, there's no, um, there were no studios doing a lot of production work when I moved here. So my, my voiceover career has pretty much exclusively been remote, except when I travel over to Vancouver for work before COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, that's generally only for animation and video games and, uh, documentary work, ADR work. Right. So what did it take to get like. Internet out where you are. Because you're not like in the city of Victoria. You're like yeah. 
like at the end of some dirt road somewhere or uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of crazy um Victoria's become an interesting, like the greater Victoria region has become an interesting um, spread or sprawl. Uh, but Machosan, the municipality in which I live, is is only about a 35-minute drive from downtown Victoria when there's no traffic. Um, but when you get here, yeah, you really feel like you have hit the most rural of, of areas. Uh, and I, I basically do live in the rainforest. There's no mobile reception at all, or none. There's like a bar, yeah. Well, like in my in my house, at least, I have to do the old like you know, stand on one foot and uh, put reach some up t- tin foil and yeah, the end hold of my nose and, and yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's no mobile no cell signal, um, but I am able to get I'm able to get fiber um, gig down gig up, which is which is crazy to me, and that's. That's pretty easy to obtain out here, and uh, it it works really solidly. That's great. Once again, we're talking with Matt Kalrick. If you've got a question for Matt, throw it in the chat room right now. Um, now, you're you're from Oz, you're from Australia, and you have a distinct. I think it's mellowed a little bit since the years I've known oh, yes. you, but uh, Australian That's accent. A nice way to put it. <laughs> yeah, mongrel it's become... accent is how I would describe it. <laughs> what do you work in all different accents? I mean, do you work in Australian accent, you work in British, do you work in in English, and do you do it in Canadian? And can you do a a decent Canadian accent? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny when when we would have first met, actually, uh, meeting both of you. Um, I think my my main thing was being an Australian voice and my brand was down under voiceovers and big honking kangaroo the, <laughs> I remember. as the logo. <laughs> uh, and over time, um, my work has evolved where now the majority of what I do is uh, US English, um, working with yeah clients in the US and um, overseas. And I do, I do British work, um, mostly what we might call British for Americans or British for Canadians. Explain. Um, <laughs> yeah, explain. exactly. E- explain? Yes. What does that mean? <laughs> Give us well, an example. It, it, means, it means it might not fly in the UK, um, but, but actually I have done some, some national broadcast work in the UK over the years and, uh, you know, no one complained and I kept getting asked back, so... Um, you mean you mean like Disney English? Hello, governor. You mean that kind of oh, stuff? Oh. <laughs> no, no. I don't even think that's a, a British for Americans. I mean, no, how, that's how does that make you guys feel? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's not like bad. It's like the the you know the gecko gecko. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's exactly. Actually cockney. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I think a lot of what I do with the UK accent ends up over there, um, but it's um, not not a huge portion of of what I do. I'd say the the um, largest amount of work after U.S. and Canadian is uh, what we dub as transatlantic or the intercontinental accent, um, you know, just that global sound. And the nice thing there is I've always framed it as doing an accent badly but consistently. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, like, you know, maybe a, a German guy who learned... English in the United States, so it has that like German accent, but it sounds uh, it sounds vaguely European, so you can't quite place it. And and uh, a lot of a lot of the global brands like that sound because it it sounds luxurious and and fancy. Right, that's an almost perfect imitation of Armin Heistetter when you when you talk <laughs> like that. I don't know if I've ever heard his voice out loud. Oh no, I, you have to meet his words. Yeah. Typed. Good singer, good singer too. Anyway, once again, we're talking with Matt Kalrick uh, out of Victoria, British Columbia, and he is a multiple accent voice actor, and you do a lot of different stuff. What primarily are you working on right now? Uh, Accent-wise? Uh, anything. What kind of work have you been, keep, what's been keeping you oh, busy? Yeah, uh, mostly commercial these days. Um, like like many of us, I, I play in a, a lot of the, the genres, uh, which I enjoy, but... Um, uh, I've been doing more and more character work in in animation and games as of late. Um, it's nice to see the that work has opened up more remote 
opportunities. Um, but yeah, I'd say mostly I'm doing commercial and, and short form, like short video content. Um, that's, that's the bulk of what I do on a yeah. daily, weekly basis. Yeah. You talk to, I know you mentor a lot of people. People are always asking you about, how do I get into voiceover? How do I do that? And you're noted for that for some reason. I mean, they, they called George and I too, and we're like, you, you know, you could go to law school. Uh, but uh, <laughs> how do you, how do you work with people? Are, are, are you coaching at all or are you mentoring anybody or, 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 or do you just take the letters and just answer them all as they come? Yeah, I I like the the mentoring approach. Um, I tend to only you know work with one person at a time and and uh, decide what we want to get out of the relationship uh, or you know how I can help them. Um, I don't do performance coaching. That's not not something that I've ever personally got into. Uh, over the years, uh, a lot of other talent have asked me to help them with their their business software, um, specifically CRM. And uh, at first it was kind of casual and just, you know, answering questions and pointing people in the right direction. And uh, eventually enough people were asking me to, uh, to, to work with them in, uh, in creating a, a workflow and a setup that they could use for uh, out, doing outreach to leads and even just tracking jobs and auditions, that sort of thing. That uh, I started doing some consulting, so uh, yeah, that's a that's a piece of what I do as well, um, and uh, really enjoy it because often it's working with people that are quite far along in their voiceover careers, and they're just trying to develop more fluid systems to not lose their minds. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. try to like get in and remove that pain point. Uh, so. Explain to people what a CRM is for, any, for those of the people out there that don't know what a CRM is and, and, and how do you assist people with it? Yeah, so CRM is client relationship management or uh, customer relationship management software. And uh, it can be many things to different people. Uh, I think the way that I've used it as a voice talent is to keep track of, of jobs and my clients, um, whether it's you know, managing a booking, um, keeping all the, the details, like which mic I used, which accent I used, um, any, any particular uh, technical notes on, on file formats, um, you know, keeping details like that under my control and checking in on, on existing clients and agents and just nurturing those relationships. And then for growing business where you have a, a lead database and, uh, just make the initial contact and then the all important follow up after that initial contact is made. Um, and a lot of people that I work are kind of new to the CRM game. And I just work with one in particular, Zoho CRM, um, because I found that I was able to turn it into the exact CRM that I wanted after using a bunch in the early days. Um, I just figured out the features that I wanted in a CRM. And uh, using Zoho just allowed me to go in and customize what I wanted. And then it also integrates with other products like the bookkeeping software and uh, file management, s similar to Dropbox and uh, social media management. And they all integrate in together in, in one, one network, similar to um, Office 365 or Salesforce, those sorts of things. Yeah. So Zoho actually has a good, even remote desktop uh, tool. I've actually stumbled on it. It, it. It's free and it works really, really well. There's a lot of really good tools in that suite. Yeah, yeah. I use the, the remote desktop, uh, you know, the assist. You're talking about Zoho assist. Assist, right? that's it. Yeah, yeah. assist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I use that for doing the, the screen, um, screen sharing and screen controlling when we're setting up people's um, Zoho setups. It's it's really handy that way. I find that the the meeting software is not as as solid as Zoom. Um, not much is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think like that's that's what a lot of um, what Zoho does is they take an existing product that is is really solid in the market and they they uh, iterate their own version of it. And some are not quite as strong, but some are really really quite good. 
Yep. Once again, we're talking with Matt Kalrick, and we're talking about his career and some of the cool stuff that he does. You're doing stuff all over the place. How do you find work? Uh, I mean, are you represented? Are you? Are, is most of it from your own outward marketing, or what do you think? Yeah, I think a lot of the foundation of my business is built from doing my own direct marketing over the years, uh, mostly email and, and calling um, in the early days and uh, getting on rosters. You know, that was certainly a big part of, of what I did early on. And, uh, you know, many of those clients are still, still there as a, a piece of the, the business pie. And over time, I've developed relationships with, with agents um, and they've become a bigger part of my business. And then I also um, have management representation now, and uh, that that's pretty new to me. But um, already really liking that. Uh, so for me, it's it's definitely a a pie of lots of different sources, but uh, they all they all have their part to play. And right. uh, I don't think I would now want to rely on just one single slice. Uh, I like the <laughs> diversification of having you know multiple sources coming in at all yeah. times. A lot of people, you know, hear about, you know, management because it's different from an agent. How, how do you work with the, with the manager? What do they do for you? Uh, well, as I said, I'm, I'm pretty new and new to uh, having a manager and a lot of managers tend to have different models, but uh, a, a manager's role is really elevating an already established career and uh, that, that may be generating new direct opportunities so auditions for for spots and for promos and trailers and cartoons and and video games um and managers also can broker new relationships with with agents and um they're very well connected most managers yeah that's and that's why they become managers they have a lot of Uh, skin in the game too right yeah i mean they have a lot to gain by building the career of that talent you know, That's they're really right. vested in you in, a, in another level beyond an agent who might just represent you for like just this one market or this one city, right? Exactly. They're, they're taking your career and um, just always working with you to maintain forward momentum. Is there, is there any strategy that they bring to the table as well, do you feel like? Um, I'm really just a month, month or so in with, yeah, okay. uh, with my manager. We'll wait and um, see. We'll wait and yeah, see. Well, yeah, we'll talk yeah. to you in a year. And, <laughs> what kind of contract uh, yeah. did you sign? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've already, uh, I've already, uh, got a few bookings through them. Um, and, uh, the strategy I think is just, you know, a large <laughs> increase in opportunities. Um, yeah. for me, particularly on the West coast, um, I have really great, um, representation on the east coast and then uh in vancouver as well and um i just really wanted to um spread my wings and and you know increase the number of my at bats every day yeah how many auditions do you think you do in a day it depends obviously but yeah it's um it's it's pretty (laughs) i don't mind saying it's pretty hectic at the moment when also juggling um you know daily booked sessions and unsupervised sessions and just trying to work them all in together. But, um, I mean, some days it's, uh, as much as 20 and, um, I'd say most days now I'm at least 10 auditions. Um, and that can be partly because of the number of, as we talked before about the accents, the number of, um, the amount of ground that I cover with, with accents and, and, uh, different styles. If I was just focusing on one particular genre, it would be less, but um, I like to play. So, uh, there's, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that comes through my inbox every day, and I don't do it all. Um, yeah, so even with that, even with the, the 10 on the 20 um, a day, it uh, can be, I can already have separated out the ones that, that weren't fully in my wheelhouse. <laughs> I'm going to run you through this. I want you to do an Austrian accent, an Australian accent. You can do, you can do an Australian accent too, but an Australian accent, <laughs> British, American, and Canadian. Just do what one after another, and let's see yep. how, how. See if you can shift. But Dan, I'm useless without a script. 
Dance, boy, dance. Yeah. <laughs> so what? It was it was Australian, right? Just American, well, that's your norm. That's your normal voice. Yeah. A, a, yeah, a, a, yeah. Australian, <clears throat> British, American, Canadian. Okay. Um. So, uh, because I I feel I often feel like the hardest thing to do is to have chit chat. In the, <laughs> in the different, different accents. accents, although that's a part of what I do. Like if I'm on a on a Source Connect session, right? Um, you know, from the moment I get on, I am the guy they hired me to be. So All right, let's let's you know, role play I'm Matt then. Colrick. I'm Matt Colrick here on uh, VOBS episode two hundred and thirty three. Two hundred and thirty. Two hundred and thirty. Yeah, believe it. So or I'm not. I'm Matt I'm Matt Colrick. I'm here on uh, VOBS episode two hundred and thirty here with uh, Dan Leonard, George the Tech. Uh, so that's that's one of the British accents. Yeah, that that's a light British. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I mean, some of the time I'll do like uh, you know, I'm Matt Colrick here on VOBS episode two hundred and thirty with Dan Leonard and George the Tech. Uh, that's mm -hmm. the sound that I often get hired for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you're you're good at that. Yeah, and then um, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, American. So two two hundred and thirty VOBS. Uh, Matt Colrick here with Dan Leonard and George the Tech. <laughs> and uh, we're just uh, we're just having a great great time, having a few la few laughs. Yeah. Now some Kenuk, some uh, Canadian. Oh, okay. All right. So uh, I mean, a lot of what I'll, I'll, I'll preface this, but a lot of uh, what they want in Canada is a more neutral sound. But sure. if I was to play it up, um, yeah, I'm here on uh, VOBS episode 230 with uh, with Dan Leonard and George the Tech, and uh, my name's Matt Colrick. It's just every all the O's are like the vowels are a little bit longer, but you yeah. still have to get that the uh, the R sound, and and then if you got me to say something like process or you know, sure, and uh, I like I like I like H's with my with my herbs. Yeah, say S say S O R R Y. Oh, sorry, yeah. Perfect. But that's that's kind of overdoing it, yeah. Sorry, yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. You nailed the American yeah. Canadian accent, <laughs> the I, one that we I had an eat. interesting audition where I had to. Uh, they wanted like three varying degrees of um, Canadian, and uh, so it was like, yeah, the the broadcast uh, broadcast voice for Canada, where it's just a little more round, but you still you still feel like it's a little neutral North American, and then it went from there to. Um, out in the the Maritimes, which is like, oh yeah, I'm here. Uh, there, there, everything is like, uh, well, it barely makes sense. You know, you just gotta like dial in the. It's almost like uh, Canadian cowboys, right? Is that Nova hey. Scotia? Yeah, no, yeah, Nova for sure, Scotia. Scotia. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. like yeah. Maine, yeah. Maine, that whole part of the country, Maine, New England, has the best accents. So like from oh, the Maine beautiful. up north to the Nova Scotia, that is the best. For sure. Yeah. I once had an audition and they said they want burly and Canadian. And I'm like, so you want me to be like more Canadian like this? And I got the job and they said, don't do the Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Just be burly. We like the guy with that accent. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we're talking with Matt Kalrick here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Have you got a question for Matt? Because he's a fascinating guy. Throw it in the chat room, and we will get to that question in just a couple of minutes. In the meantime, we're going to take a break, and we're going to uh, answer those questions. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, voiceover body shop. Don't go away. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. 
And now a word from Harlan Hogan and VoiceOverEssentials.com. Has this ever happened to you? Embarrassing. The washers on these booms? Eh, they're not so great at holding up your expensive microphone. And here's the answer. The adjustable boom stop is great. Easy to attach and works like a charm. No more droopy mic. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. Unique double-loop webbing system for unlimited angle of the downstrap. Works with tripod and solid round bases. Light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for each performer. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone with free standard shipping in the continental U.S. Hold up your mic with the ABS Adjustable Boom Stop. Hey, remember Father's Day is coming up, so ask your loved ones to get you a Voice Over Essentials gift card. Tell them to go over to voiceoveressentials.com. Hey there, I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and with my company, VO Heroes, and my team of coaches and my community of voiceover talent, we guide voiceover actors along their journey. And you may be watching VOBS here, uh, and not nearly as far along as many of the other people who are watching. You may not even have started yet. And we actually specialize in helping you do just that. So if you're watching all the stuff going on here on VOBS and going, I have no idea what they're talking about. I don't know, but I really want to do this. I'd really like to help you. Please go to VOHeroes.com slash start. That's VOHeroes.com slash start. And you can take our Getting Started in VoiceOver class, which tells you everything you need to get started as a voice talent. And I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you with that journey. Again, voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back here at Voice Over Body Shop talking with Matt Kalrick. Again, if you've got a question for Matt, throw it in the chat room on Facebook. Or if you're watching on YouTube, there's a chat room in there, and you can throw it in there. And I know that Jeff Holman is taking down these questions, and we're going to get to those questions right now. You ready there, uh, Matt? You bet. Okay. Well, let, that remains to be seen. Let's see. <laughs> Go <laughs> for it, George. <laughs> First one up is from Terry Briscoe. And the question is, hey, Matt, what was your first VO gig, and how long did it take for you to book it? If you can remember, that is. <laughs> oh. Uh, hard to hone in on the exact timeline, but uh, I think from being out of high school, um, I was starting to, to I, I got my first home studio recording set up and was playing around with amateur voice acting forums, those sorts of things, and um, practicing at home, doing some coaching. So I think it was probably about a year and a, yeah, a year, a year and a half um, when I got my first booking, and um, it was through through networking, working the uh, the people you know, and I I got a commercial in in one of the uh, the pro studios in Brisbane for a, a university, and uh, because I'd come from amateur stuff and just doing it doing it for uh, the love of animation and video games, it was a real game changer for me to go in and, and really enjoy a commercial job as well. And well, there's a second part to that too. Sorry, I stepped on you, Matt. I mean, no, that's okay. Sorry yeah. about that. Oh, I was just going to say that um, I was a poor music student at the time, so uh, getting paid 700 bucks for an hour of work was... Like it blew my mind. Miraculous. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> no ramen for me tonight. <laughs> Another second part to that. Um, Matt, how often do you work with dialect coaches? Says Terry. Dialect coaches, not so much. Um, when I first started doing uh, US accent work, um, I was pretty close. Like a lot of Australians grew up with American TV. Um, and, uh, I was watching from the sidelines wanting to do some of the, the really cool U S work that I was, that I was seeing. I, I just knew that I had a couple of gaps to close to, to really get to a hundred percent with the accent in order to compete. 
Um, and so I worked with one uh, dialect coach then, um, Linda Brennan. This would have been back in 2012. And um, it was a really useful consultation for affirmation where she said, yeah, you're really close. Here's what you need to work on. And she gave me exercises and phonetic guides to uh, to work with to to fine tune the the areas where I was lacking and um, I think dialect coaches could be really good for um, getting practice to be confident on a live session because that's one of the things with accent work it doesn't matter if you can do a really good um, American British Australian accent uh, when you're self taping in your home studio and you can screw it up and try it again. <laughs> right. And, you know, if you're really nervous about it, it's, it's not such an issue when it's unsupervised, but if you go on a live session on source connect, when they want you to be able to read through a 30 second script without stumbling, screwing up, um, that's where the challenge comes in. So I think it would be useful to, to work with a, a dialect coach to either pick up the areas where, um, you're not sufficient or just say like, no, you're doing fine. You're doing great. Go, Go forth and and make money. That's the best way to do it. That's and that's why we're here. Uh, Lydia Meadows asks Matt, what language or accent do you work in most? Uh, yeah, now it's it's uh, American, neutral North American. <laughs> neutral North American, yeah. <laughs> so you can cover any place. Yeah, that's right. The, yeah, the, <laughs> the national Louisiana. appeal. <laughs> that's what we're all going for. Yeah. You got yeah, the question think, from – yeah, go ahead. Grace and, and I think oh, a close, ahead, second, close second would be um, uh, the transatlantic, you know, mid-Atlantic. Mi- mi- the mid-Atlantic accent. Guy who's – man of the world, yes. Yes, quite. Yeah. Erudite from a 1930s film. <laughs> uh, Grace Newton asks, hey, Matt. Has there ever been a time in your career where you got knocked down? And if so, how did you regain positive perspective and keep pushing forward? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, I, I feel like maybe have had a pretty good and uh, gentle run of things in, in voiceover. Like there's never been something where I really felt distraught um, about my, my business and, and my career. Um, there, there have been roles where, um, you know, I felt like I, I really wanted them, but I, I learned pretty early on in voiceover just to not get attached to auditions and, you know, put your all into them and, and let them go. Uh, cause I was initially trying to think of, Oh, like what's a role that I really wanted and got really sad when it didn't happen. Um, I, I think it's all just like when life stuff goes on and because, we as performers are, uh, our product is us. And, um, it felt like whenever I had like a significant, uh, life, life struggle, medical stuff, those sorts of things, when that goes on, it, it feels, it feels like your business is also suffering in addition to your personal life and, you know, your, your physical health, those sorts of things. Uh, yeah, for a, for a career where you are the product, it's, it, it's very stressful. And I think in those times, um, you know, I've, I've worked with life coaches before in the, in the past and, uh, have some tools that have really helped, um, me to continue on doing work myself. But I guess like in times where I was really, uh, yeah, having, having a struggle, um, life coaching was, was, um, a really useful, useful thing I picked up. I got a question for you, though. Hmm. What kind of other help have you found has helped your productivity recording in your studio? Any human resources? Any other people give you assistance from time to time? Uh, you mean as far as, like, uh, troubleshooting or just, like, in the, the day-to-day? The day-to-day of operating your business. Yeah. What are some well, other tools about- in your toolbox in terms of things that you use, services, people, whatever that you, that really has made your, just improved your productivity? Uh, very early on in my career, like particularly when I was full time, um, I always embraced the help of, of hiring editors for longer form work. 
and then uh, about three years ago, it's, it's, it's actually over three years ago, I ended up hiring someone local in Victoria um, to be my sound engineer. And he's, he's been working with me full time for three years now. Um, and uh, John, he runs live sessions. Like instead of me connecting directly to a phone patch, I'll connect to him on Source Connect and um, he'll be conducting oh, the session. He's working as... virtually with you. Well, he did come here to my studio and then COVID happened and um, we had actually already tested a remote setup when I was traveling to Australia one time. Um, and John was doing, John was kind of like driving all the studio operations so I could have my holiday and he would just give me a list of everything that I had to record for the day. And I just, you know, bash it out in one session and he'd, he'd chop it off and send everything to agents, to clients. Um, and, uh, so we, we developed a really, I think a really slick remote work process between both our, um, using pro tools and also, uh, just you know, coordinating MP3s and email and, and file names. Um, and yeah, that, that has been a huge, huge um, addition to my career, both in terms of saving me time. Um, it's really wonderful to like have someone to work with every day, <clears throat> especially when it's all just, you know, self-tape stuff and um, sending off auditions as MP3s. Uh, it's, it's really nice you know, kind of having a, a workplace, uh, even at the moment, it's a little more virtual. Um, that's, that's just added a lot to, to my life and, and I think to my work as a result of that. Does he give you subtle feedback? Like I, I know in engineering, an engineer in a studio in a traditional sense, mm -hmm. they have been known to speak up. If there's something that's just not working or whatever, does he, is he at liberty to do that three years into you know, this relationship? Does that, does that happen? Yeah, I mean, over three years, I've really shown him what a bad rate, bad read is. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, just constantly hearing me go. Uh, no, I've I've encouraged that over time, and I'm just really lucky that um, he comes from a a film background and and music background, so he has a very good ear and like a very good artistic sense. So I've I've always welcomed the feedback, and in the same sense, um, when we're recording, say like a a three minute video. Um, we can do a, a source connect session and maybe do a read through or two and then do a bunch of pickups and I can trust him to, um, cobble it all together as I would and, um, you know, be sending the, the client, um, a, a polished product that I'm happy with. So I'd kind of step away from that. Well, I, I, I remembered that you were doing that, but I wasn't sure. So that's why I led you into the question, led you into the answer. Cause I really wanted to know. And, and I think honestly, I'll be straight. I think it's brilliant. I know it's cost money. It's a, it's a chunk out of your bottom line, but I, I think it's really smart. I've, I've been years. I always thought a business model was to train virtual engineer assistants to do this exact job for, for voice yeah. actors. So they could, they could sideload, you know, a big portion of their, even if they have the time technically to do it, to then redirect that energy to, oh, yeah. to growing the business or making new service, whatever it is, and offloading some of that. You know, that's that thinking like a CEO mentality. And I, again, a huge kudos to you for doing that. I think it's, I really think it's, uh, it's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been it's been wonderful, and um, you know the watching the evolution of of my engineer has been really cool too. Uh, you know, he's had the chance to grow in areas from uh, just basic editing, and now he can you know he can drive a um, a Pro Tools session like a boss. Uh, you know, in line with a lot of people that I work remotely with on on Source Connect, like he's acquired that skill set. Um, the mixing element is, uh, you know, still something that he's working on, but, um, you know, when we are required to do the mix, we're often outsourcing that to, um, an audio producer, but he, he knows how to, um, line everything up. So it's been really cool to see someone evolve in that, Absolutely. in that role. And, and yeah, I think it would be a great thing for, um, other voice talent to use, um, where they think it is, uh, something that could fit into their, into their business. It certainly frees up lots of time it um changes the way that you perform when you're not having to engineer um and uh yeah it, 
it's given me back so much. Sure. Yeah, it's it's sort of the same thing. A lot of people we talk to who are now have home studios. They were so used to working in a studio with somebody, and the engineer would always do the work. So it's sort of you're you're bringing it back to the way it was. Only you get yeah. to sit at home while you're doing it, which is kind of nice. Yeah, I think my my uh, longer term goal with with my engineer was to create a a system where it was almost like I was driving to you know, 50 studios in a day and just being the talent. Um, and we can do that with Source Connect. Like we just, I just dial, he's got his own Source Connect account um, that I that I purchased. Uh, like it works well using the two. And uh, we just, you know, jump on, pound something out, do some auditions, do some jobs. And it's, uh, uh, it feels like, yeah, just going studio to studio and not having to worry about scripts, not having to worry about recording, anything. It's, it's really useful. Yeah. yeah, and now George doesn't have to do the Source Connect commercial because you just did it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thanks. I don't have to make up another Source Connect commercial. <laughs> J. Horace Black asks uh, on YouTube, speaking of technology, what is your setup or mic chain and what are you using? You're mostly your 416, your 103, or and do you use any plugins or straight into an interface? And what is it that your engineer is doing? Or how? What do you know what you're working on in your chain there? Yeah, um, so I mostly record on the 416. I have the U87 AI, which I which I do use um, a fair amount as well. Uh, and it's it's all going. I was running the um, I was running everything into the Universal Audio 6176, and now that is sitting in a box, and <laughs> I'm just using the the Apollo Twin. I was using the um, the X6, but that one's um, gone to to John, my engineer. So he uses that. I use the the Twin X, and um, at the moment I'm talking to you guys just on the the Twin, uh, the Apollo's preamp. Uh, I like to use the uh, Voxbox uh, Unison plugin and the uh, the Avalon. They're both nice to play around with, but largely because of the nature of what I do connecting to other studios, it's just setting either the the preamp the unison preamp, um, with no compression or EQ. Um, and, uh, I'm in a room that George Woodham helped me to dial in ever so nicely. Um, so there's not, there's not a lot that we need to do. Um, it's, it's pretty, pretty bare bones. All right. We got time for one more question here, uh, from Terry Briscoe. He says, Matt, what do you feel challenges you most in voiceover? Hmm. 30 second spots with 35 seconds of copy. Yeah, that one's a fun <laughs> one. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> uh, honestly, I think these days there's so many directions that you can pursue. Uh, you know, if you do like to keep a pretty diverse pie um, and it's that, that focus of, um, you know, knowing in a given day where to, to just apply my efforts to. And uh, and I think um, as far as the the auditions and the things coming in, it's a it's a nice problem to have. But sometimes I probably do need to be more selective about where I turn my attention to on uh, on a given day. Um, I think it's very easy with a voiceover career, whether you're doing marketing or administration, bookkeeping, recording auditions, recording jobs, to quickly reach the end of the day and just have no time left, and um, it that that can kind of lead to burnout. So I'm I feel like I'm always battling burnout. Good. All right. Well, I doubt you'll ever burn out because you love what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. it's true. Well, Matt, it's been great seeing you. It's been a long time, and hopefully, I'll yeah, get to we'll long. get to run into each other at a conference uh, towards the end of the year if they ever let us out of our houses. Um, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, you can uh, go to my website, mattcolrick.com. Um, and then, uh, for the, uh, CRM consulting side of things, uh, Matt at timbersound.ca will do the trick. Uh, that'll, that'll help you connect with me on that channel. Excellent. Well, Matt, great seeing you. Thanks so much for joining us this week. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, yeah, man. Thanks for having good me, to guys. see you again. Yeah. Really good to see you guys. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. We'll Bye. be right back to wrap things up and rack it up for tech talk right after these. Don't go away. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, I'm going to keep this short because we just had the best Source Connect uh, endorsement you could ever have from uh, Matt just a minute ago. He uses it, is it. It's just a daily part of his workflow. He's not only using Source Connect to connect to studios when studios request it, which is going to happen quite a bit when you're doing commercial work and those kind of bigger ticket kind of work. Um, he's actually made it part of his daily workflow. He's actually got a virtual engineer um, who worked with him for a while in studio, but now is remote. And he remotes to that engineer on Source Connect every day and records and has him record everything for him. I mean, I know some of you are aspiring or maybe you had five years in, you're thinking, I can't imagine what that would cost. But boy, you get to a certain level in your career. And if you're where you're at, where, where Matt is, you can't not do it because it will improve your life. You're going to have so much more free time and you're going to feel connected because you really are. You're connected every day to another human being. It's pretty amazing. So what a cool use of Source Connect. And if you want to do it too, just go over to source-elements.com and get a free trial and you know the rest. You watch the show. All right, let's go back to the studio right after a little funny bumper or banner or something. I'm going to press a button and we're going to see what happens. Here we go. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Hey, it worked. Well, no, we, we're actually, always on the wrong side from each other. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, keep... <laughs> we wanted to, we wanted to show this bumper. <laughs> I love that one, man. <laughs> Where did he find that sound effect? Actually, I think great. I did that one for him. Anyway, uh, boy, it's great having Matt on here. We haven't seen him in a long time, and he's yeah. such a super duper guy. Uh, yeah, really talented. Yeah. Uh, next week on this very show, which we're going to record right now. So if you got tech questions, throw them in the chat room right now. I think we have a few already. Uh, tech Talk number 80 will be here. So, uh, that's going to be interesting because we've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about there. Who are our donors of the week? Starting off with Jonathan Grant. Crest, Crest, <laughs> Crest of <Jonathan. laughs> Take it from the top, will you? <laughs> Christopher. Jonathan Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Take three. Go. Jonathan Grant. Christopher Epperson. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Tom Pinto. Shelly Avellino. George Whittam, your dad. Brian Page. Patty Gibbons. Rob Ryder. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Shauna Pennington Baird. Martha Kahn. Don Griffith. And Trey Mosley. And Diana Birdsall. And, and Sandra Manuel. Sandra Miller. Boy, lots of people. We really appreciate it. If you want to donate to the show to maintain the technical superiority that we have attained over 11 years, and maintain that, and you just like the show, you can go to our website, uh, vobs.tv, and there is an actual button there that says Donate. And uh, you can you can pay us a dollar a month. You can pay us $10 a month. You can pay us $100 a month. We're not going to decline that. <laughs> but a buck a month or something like that, it just shows you care, and it helps us uh, do what we do here. Um, 
you have a coupon code for 20% off? I do still have that coupon code and it still does work. I must be crazy. Yes, that is true. 20% <laughs> well, off. I know that. Huh? And that includes the <laughs> webinars. So uh, next webinar coming up is for Twisted Wave. It's I'm calling it my advanced Twisted Wave webinar because I haven't done one of those yet. Um, and it's going to be June 25th. Uh, by the time you guys see this, I uh, know I don't have it up on the website yet, but <laughs> it'll be up soon. <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that we're doing that soon. And Dan, tell us about where they can find you on the web. Uh, they can find me over at homevoiceoverstudio.com, which I'm supposedly the new one is up. It's been finished. It's supposed to be up. We'll see. You've been rather busy, probably not too, too, <laughs> too excited about all the things going on the travel. So I, I, yeah, I, I just spent all week just sitting, staring out the window like my wife did, you know, it's <laughs> like, can't go anywhere and you know, but uh, at least I'm feeling better. I'm going to test myself tonight to see if I'm if I'm negative now. Good. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And, and JMC, JMC Demos. Demos. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room tonight on uh, Facebook and in uh, and YouTube. And... Uh, George was directing this particular session, although I would intercede every now and again. I was TDing, you were Ding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go to this show. No, no, you do that one. We fight over all this all the time. All right. We're going to set it up for Tech Talk, and uh, we'd love your questions there. So uh, join us. Don't go away if you're, if you're watching this live. Uh, you know, this isn't an easy business. VoiceOver requires a lot of different skills. So we bring you the people that can show you how they do what they do. And we're about to show you how you can do what you need to do technologically. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, we're going to just click it off for now. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. See you in a bit. Bye, everybody. <laughs>